Right now, Apple has an awesome lineup of laptops with long battery life, well-built, and with minimal heat or fan noise. And there are some significant pitfalls you need to be aware of when choosing which one to buy. So today I'm bringing you the ultimate guide on which MacBook you should buy and what configurations to consider. Now, I know you're eager for the answer, but before I get to it, here's a crucial piece of advice that could save you hundreds of dollars. Firstly, Apple's stock configurations of MacBooks frequently go on sale at retailers, but not at Apple stores. Don't be the one who pays full price for a Mac laptop at the Apple store when you could get the exact same laptop for $200 less just down the street. Always check out sites that track the best prices on Mac laptops so you don't miss these deals. Second, I strongly recommend buying a base model MacBook without customizing it, if possible. Retailers often discount these base models, while custom configurations generally need to be bought directly from Apple, meaning you miss out on those sale prices. Even when custom configurations are available through retailers, the discounts are usually smaller. So rather than customizing, it's often smarter to step up to the next model. Next, don't buy a MacBook expecting it to be your last laptop. Apple laptops hold high resale value compared to PCS. Instead of spending a lot of money on expensive upgrades to future-proof your Mac, consider saving that money to replace your laptop more frequently. For example, if you're considering a MacBook Air with the M2 chip and thinking of upgrading it with 16 gigabytes of memory and one terabytes of storage, the base model costs $1,400, and because it's a custom configuration, you'll likely miss out on a sale. The real cost of those upgrades is closer to $600. Instead, you could save that $600, sell your base model when a new version comes out, and use the savings to buy a newer, better version. Now, I'm not against Apple's upgrades, but they are expensive, and it's better to keep that money in your pocket unless you truly need the upgrades. Finally, Apple laptops are high-quality devices, so don't shy away from buying a second-hand model from Apple or warranty, and many resellers offer the option to extend that warranty with AppleCare. All right, let's get into who should buy which Mac laptop, starting with the MacBook Air 13 with M1. This is the laptop to get if you're on a tight budget, as it frequently goes on sale for around $750. Even though it was released several years ago, it's still competitive at that price point. It's a good all-around device, bright display, color accurate, high resolution, and well-built, with a great trackpad and decent keyboard. It also features a keyboard that angles toward you, making it comfortable for longer use. Like all Airs, there's no fan, so you don't get any fan noise, and the battery life is decent. However, if you're looking for more in 2024, there are newer laptops under $1,000 that offer bigger displays and faster processors. If you can't find the M1 model at a great price, there are better alternatives to consider. This brings me to the MacBook Air 13 with M2. This is a significant upgrade from the M1 version. It's got a brighter, larger 13.6 inch display and is actually lighter than its predecessor. The laptop looks more modern with smaller bezels and it's powered by the faster M2 chip. For casual tasks like browsing, document work, and content consumption, it's a dream laptop, especially for students. If productivity is your top priority, the MacBook Air 15 with M2 is a fantastic option. Its larger screen makes multitasking easier, and it's still remarkably light for its size. This is great for professionals like lawyers, accountants, or anyone who needs to work on larger documents or spreadsheets. However, if your work requires more performance, programming, video editing, music production, or design, then a MacBook Pro is a better choice. Don't try to make a MacBook Air something it's not by upgrading its memory. Yes, Airs are capable, but they're not designed for high-performance tasks. The MacBook Pro 14 strikes the perfect balance between performance and portability. It's ideal for software developers, designers, and creators who need power on the go. Its 14.2-inch screen is large enough for serious work. It has fast ports, and its speakers are fantastic. The keyboard also feels more comfortable than the Airs with more key travel. For those who need more screen real estate, the MacBook Pro 16 offers a significantly larger display, better cooling, and the power to handle the most demanding tasks, especially with the M3 Max chips. Just be careful about which processor you choose, as there are major differences between the models. In summary, if you're doing creative work or need a powerful machine, the MacBook Pros with the M3 Pro chip are excellent, delivering strong battery life, quiet operation, and impressive performance across the board. But for professional creators, especially in video editing, it's worth considering an older model with the M2 Max chip, which may perform just as well for your needs without the additional cost. 